Welcome back to We Play Games, I'm Walker, and here we are in Her Majesty's Government, Episode 6. So Queen Victoria here, who we're playing as, uh, she's 63 years old, but she does have kidney stones, so we're going to be playing some shorter episodes, expect them to be more on the 6 to 10 year range than the 10 plus year range. Um, just because I don't, I don't want to miss if she dies, because that's going to be the end of our campaign, because we're playing here as Queen Victoria. She is, of course, closely aligned with the Industrialist Party, as you would expect. Um, and now, finally, we have a, a feminist in control of the Liberal Party. We had a, a Republican for a little while, very dangerous. And so we have this really nice little market map here, and we have... Basically, almost all of these territories are now protectorates. Our customs union is actually relatively small. The majority of that map that you see there are these protectorates. But we have a couple of people that we're working on bankrolling, and we've just been expanding that way diplomatically. Um, and it's been pretty helpful to keep our infamy down because it's allowed us to continue to do lots of trade. But thus far, it's been hard to secure enough oil. It's the nature of the game at this point. Um, so we are doing whatever we can to get oil for the, the market, uh, but we have had a bunch of rebellions in Belgium, so we're going to try to annex that as soon as we're done here with our big war. But this is the big one. We are fighting an alliance of the EIC, Prussia, and the United States of America at the moment. And look, we even got yellow Austria-Hungary. So that's pretty cool, um, and we've taken the Ottoman Empire to town. Like it's it's been pretty bad for them thus far that they've tried to remain on the outside. We didn't even rival them; they're just being jerks. But we do have a fight with the U.S. and with the EIC and with Prussia. So we've added liberate New England, and I think we're gonna add a few other liberate countries. Honestly, I wouldn't hate seeing an, an independent Westphalia. Yeah, let's release Westphalia because then we can try to integrate that into our market, and that'll be a huge thing for us. And I think our war plan is going to be deal with the EIC first, and then we can deal with the US and Prussia. Brought Hanover into our market as a protectorate, and of course we have the Netherlands. I think I think it makes sense for Prussia to feel threatened like this, but they're going to go all in on a, a fight against us that I don't think they're going to be able to win, especially because our fleets will rule the waves. Yeah, we could recruit a South African general. I wouldn't hate that. Just to deal with all these rebellions that keep breaking out. Having a, a local police force makes a lot of sense. All right, Belgian proletarian revolt has broken out. Win, win that little war, and then, boy, it's off to the races here. The war with the British Raj. The Danish are trying to take British Togo from us. How dare they? Prussia, it did not have to be like this, by the way. Prussia and Her Majesty's government had friendly relations for a very long time, but for whatever reason, Prussia, I guess, with their goal of unifying Germany and our goal of unifying the world into one market, um, w those came into conflict, I suppose, inevitably. Yeah, with the British Raj under our control, I don't care that we're burning two million uh, a, a week right now, because once we get all of these territories under our control and switch them over to advanced methods of production and start doing construction there, whoa, is our credit limit going to explode? And because, of course, we have secured laissez-faire, our debt is not too expensive. And one thing that, that I keep meaning to mention but keep forgetting to is exactly how insanely productive some of our trade centers are. My god, this revolution for protected speech has gotten quite out of hand. Well, hopefully the, uh, the election rolls around soon and ends up with a, a weaker trade union, but we'll see. All right, so we annexed the Belgian revolt. Good. Uh, it looks like our troops are just going to push into Westphalia on their own. That's fine, because it looks like our troops are going to land in Washington, which was our hope. Oil's been discovered in Texas. Ah, uh, alas. Well, at least Mexico is conciliatory. This might be one of these cases where perhaps we'll begin improving relations with, with Mexico in an effort to strip them away from the U.S. the old-fashioned way via diplomacy. We also might need to capitulate the British Raj via naval invasion. And now we're just going to let our Ross Ridley just march as far as he can, and then he'll switch over to a defensive posture, because we want to pick up some more provinces around Washington, D.C. The U.S. isn't deploying troops at all. Well, 
All right. I said we were going to just hold on to uh, Washington, D.C., but it looks like we're not just going to hold on to Washington, D.C. It looks like the Americans have sent literally all of their soldiers over to India for some reason. So if we can capitulate anybody first, it's probably going to be the Yanks, especially since we're literally going to seize control of New England where we're establishing our new state. Yeah, once they're out, then we absolutely need to get to work on the British Raj. If this election doesn't resolve this, we will we will begrudgingly switch into free into protected speech. But it's not something that we're gonna try to move into if we can avoid it, because it'll radicalize the armed forces. That little marine invasion, the U.S. could not repel it. Ah, and the revolution actually broke broke up on its own. I guess they they got too tired being so angry. Ah, there we go. New England is on the map. All right, great. Well, we'll be able to pull New England into our uh, English market pretty quickly, I hope. This is going to be a, a real crisis for Prussia because they are going to be trying to hold on to this territory. This is this is a war that might knock them out of great power status, honestly, because we're trying to take Danzig, Pomerania, and Westphalia. Well, there we go. We have a legitimate government with the industrialists and the intelligentsia like everybody likes. We got there in a really fun and weird way, but we got there. Oh boy. Yep. Looks like we're going to capitulate the British Raj, and that'll leave us with Sikh Empire and Prussia. Yep, British Raj is gone from the map. There. And now we have the British Raj under our control, and we've switched over all of our methods of production to be much more advanced. Um, though, of course, this is going to result in us needing to trim some oil here and there. Ah, and Prussia has indeed collapsed here, so now it's just us versus the Sikhs. No, it looks like Prussia will hold on as a great power, albeit with not nearly as strong a gra uh, grasp on the position. Oh, enact restricted child labor. You know, we could do that. The industrious wouldn't like it, but that's okay. Her Majesty's government has run up over a hundred million pounds of debt. My goodness. We're not even fighting over anything anymore. Sikhs, just accept a white piece. There we go. All right, put down communist Netherlands and and Her Majesty will have peace. Oh, and rural folk are are starting a revolution after these child labor revolutions. Well, this is going to be interesting because this is going to mean some really rapid changes here in, in terms of our laws, and they're all going to be at the behest of these popular movements. All right, um, who can we... Let's annex Belgium. You guys have had way too many problems. Mexico sided with Belgium. Interesting. Well, if we can't if we can't be friends with Mexico, maybe we can be friends with the pieces of Mexico. Yeah, you know what? Let's uh let's liberate Texas, let's liberate California, and we'll liberate Maya as well. And you know what? I've been intending to take a, a treaty port here for quite some time, so let's let's go ahead and take a Veracruz treaty port. All right, well, we're going to get our war with Belgium and our war to apparently destroy Mexico. Meanwhile, we are smashing Mexico for the indignity of intervening in imperial affairs. How dare they? Uh, an uprising, you say? Looks like all of India is going to take turns trying to rise up against us, but every time they do this, they inflict devastation upon themselves, which is just going to encourage people to leave India and come to Great Britain. And Belgium has been annexed. I would say unfortunate, but it is absolutely self-inflicted. 1885, and Her Majesty's government has colonized basically all of the central slice of Africa here. We are going to annex orange once we can. They've managed to improve our relations, but with the, the annexation of the British Raj here, our ability to, to spend our construction points has increased immensely. So thank goodness. Yeah, look, GDP go up. Pomerania is offering us an obligation. Sure. Yeah, you know, we'll We'll do the same sort of thing. We're just going to bring people into our market diplomatically. France sided with the Pomeranian revolt against us. Well, France. All right. We have suffered enough dealing with the Russians and the Austrians and the French intervening in all of our affairs. So we're going to go ahead and start a humiliation play against uh, the Russians here. And we'll see what ends up coming out of the woodwork. But I expect that our goal is going to be to liberate a bunch of countries here. Ah. And of course, Qing has intervened. Yeah, let's liberate Hunan, liberate Ukraine. Yeah, and let's force them to just liberate Belarus as well. Carve up a whole bunch of this territory. But of course, we are fighting against multiple great powers or pseudo great powers here. So we are going to need to mobilize our, our army. 
Well, we are going to end up fighting a lot of Europe here. Holy cow. Prussia, Austria, and Russia all intervening to prevent us from dismantling Russia. I guess that makes sense. We're, we're not demanding small bits of Russia. We're, we're demanding a giant slice here. Well, Her Majesty's government has found herself in drawn in to quite the diplomatic situation here, so we are simultaneously trying to defend our friend in Pomerania uh, against yet another revolt out here, while also intervening in the Philippines, because the Philippines have secured their independence from Spain while we were off doing something else. Um, and of course, we're still fighting our war with Russia, so we, we've got quite the, uh, the diplomatic kerfuffle going on. We've already built away all of the peasants in Orissa. Although Orissa also was affected by a mass migration, and so that's one thing that we're really unlocking here by annexing India directly, is we're going to get a lot more pops to move out of the EIC and back to the home counties. And it looks like we're going to we're gonna beat Russia and Austria and Great Qing quite handily here. And I think at the end of that war, that'll be a nice little end to this episode. But we haven't been able to expand our market diplomatically quite as much as I'd like to during this episode, simply because there aren't a lot of territories left that aren't part of the market. So we are, we're working on finding ways to pick up maybe Poland, although they've become a protectorate of Russia in the meanwhile, so we'll have to fight them over that. Denmark keeps trying to claim our territory in Togo. We might need to to clean these guys up. It's 1888, and we really haven't yet incorporated some of these territories. It's just, it's very infamy and efficient is the problem. And Her Majesty's government really does rely on having comparatively low infamy because we do so much trade. At the moment, not a whole lot to talk about from this giant war other than our continued uh, occupation of St. Petersburg. And because we, we are fighting primarily just Russia here, we didn't add war goals against everybody else. We're just just trying to beat the Russians and the Chinese. So the Prussians are, are not very likely to want to stick around. Same with Austria-Hungary. So I wouldn't be surprised to see either of them capitulate. That is the big fight down here, though, is that Greece decided, despite the fact that they are... Yep, Prussia has capitulated. But despite the fact that Greece is, in, is our protectorate, they have become rebellious. And so that's why they've decided to throw in their lot here. But whoa, this is going to be bad for Russia. Oh, radical Prussia has emerged? An absolute monarchy. Well, we're not going to get involved in the Prussian Civil War. So, so far we've lost about 250k in this war. I think I think that that's probably due to the fact that we didn't update our, um, our barracks to field hospitals. And it's because we just didn't have enough opium to do that. At least not, not before we took over India. Good. And Austria-Hungary has capitulated. Now this war, I know, has been going on for a long time. Oh boy. Yeah, we've taken more total casualties, actually, than uh, the Russians. And it's just because we're also fighting Great Qing. But I want to see, I want to see them actually collapse. I want to see what happens when they get their boxer rebellion overthrowing their government. Hopefully, we'll see. This has been a successful campaign of industrialization thus far for India. We're down to 27 million peasants. Iron Confederacy, we, we did everything for you in Canada to fix this border on your own. You guys just really just kicked the ball down the road, didn't you? Ooh, revolutionary Denmark has broken out. Well, 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 well. You know what that means. That means that at the end of this, we're going to be able to absorb Denmark good. Yeah, and we're still floating at around 100 million in credit, but because we've built such massive amounts of buildings recently, our credit limit has exploded. We're up to 493 million and counting. And the more of these buildings that we build and the more cash that they accumulate, the faster those numbers will will go up. So we we really could be building much faster than this if we if we so desired, but the more that you build, the worse performance gets, and uh, we're already chugging, and I would like to be able to finish this campaign. Queen Victoria is 69. Queen Victoria has overseen quite the expansion of British power here in her five decades on the throne. We are by far and away the highest prestige in the game. The other great powers are really struggling. It looks like patch 1.2 is probably going to be improving the AI in a lot of ways, so I'm really looking forward to playing on it. And Hunan is left into the world. 14 million carved out of Great Qing. Although Great Qing is still at 264 million that they're governing. My god. But it's literally just us and Russia now. 
the Austrians and the Prussians left a while ago. And now we have New England in our customs union. Excellent. There we go. All right. We have liberated a giant swath of the western part of Russia, including this enormous Ukraine. So we are going to begin bankrolling those three. Um, and then we're gonna we're gonna pause this episode here. But the British market GDP is up to seventy three point nine million, versus the Austro-Hungarian market at six point eight one million, and then just not a lot of other markets of recognizable size. And hopefully, once we start chomping into some of these other markets, um, we our own market will continue to expand. Like that that chain market is very very small simply because most of these areas are still using uh, inefficient methods of production. And the more that we can bring those guys in, uh, the more it'll encourage our growth here. They stole Italy from us, those fiends. Um, but we are still growing our market as much as humanly possible uh, and getting all these nice little protectorates in the, the mix. But we'll see what, what Queen Victoria is up to in the last couple of years of her reign, because she is 69 years old. So, nice in the chat. Uh, it's 1888. We'll see if we can make it to the 20th century. That's Walker. Take care.